I thought I would show you the transition process of how I finally got to the build I'm totally satisfied with. I started off with this case. It's a Fractal Design Core 1100. Uh, it's quite small, but takes quite a lot because it's also quite deep. If anything, it's deeper than it is high. That's quite good because the modern graphics cards are often very long, especially the three fan ones. Okay, now I got bored with this case um, and my usual trick is to love to buy things every now and again to kind of cheer myself up because I'm bored with being in COVID and bored with being stuck at home. So I actually found on a local equivalent to Craigslist, a thing called adverts.ie, I found some RGB uh, RAM and I found a new processor, a Ryzen 3600. Now, I've chosen that processor because while I was mucking around staring through Amazon, I found a really, really nice cheap motherboard, which I had bought before I bought the RGB RAM. Um, the motherboard was a factory um, refurb sort of thing, something that someone had probably returned to Amazon because it wouldn't take the um, uh, 5000 series of Ryzen ROMs. Uh, CPUs. So uh, I had the motherboard uh, brand new theoretically. It actually was brand new when it came back to me. It was everything was in it and it was all in its original packaging. So the fact that I got it for something like 40 or 50 percent off, nearer 40, something like reduced from 89 to about six, uh, 55, plus of course the conversion rate from um from pounds to to euros because i live in ireland anyway here's the black case that i started with <sighs> kind of nice and roomy but kind of boring and there were problems in that you have to put some ssds and uh, maybe some two and a half inch drives go underneath this panel and then the graphics card goes across there um, quite efficient however that was that while i was fiddling around with that i discovered that uh, and realized that uh, the cpu i was using um, was some hmm, about eight years old i bought it in china because i used to work in china up till about 2000 2014 2015 so i started looking for a nice new graphics um psu and i bought myself that can you see a trend developing now there's a lot of rgb going on i bought a fairly boring motherboard a um msi b550 ma pro but i've now got two rgb sticks of ram and i bought this also at a massive discount this one was new brand new but again reduced from about 80 pounds to about 50. there's a very much a budget theme developing here so that's the end of this part of it that's where i was starting from So here is stage two. I like RGB. I like the white uh, power supply unit. I like the colorful RAM inside. And I like the all white case. And it's quite small. But uh, at the time I had a RX 580 graphics card, which is about five millimeters too long to fit in this case took me ages to get it in at an angle almost having to use a hammer to get it in so 
Shortly after this arrived, I decided to buy myself a RX 6600 graphics card because I'm trying to get more up to date. The RX 580 was a bargain and I actually bought it for about £160 and sold it for €200. Euros. So for three or four years of use, I thought I did quite well. But the 6600, which you can see in there, it's another MSI item. MSI 6600 2X Mech 8 gig. That also is a very tight fit in there. It's about 5 millimeters again, shorter than the RX 580. So it was slightly less of an angle to get it fitted in, but still awful. Um, after I had already put the 580 in here, I had nice, tidy uh, tidier, sorry, cable management. That was tidier, that was tidier. There was less going on here. Um, but unfortunately, I had bought a new cooler and that there is mounted the wrong way round. It should have some sort of cowl here. I think it's an Arctic cooler. And that should be that way. So it's pulling air in that way. Uh, I was worried it would not fit with that slightly higher profile RGB RAM in there. I should turn it round when I mount it in my stage three case, which I shall show you later. Um, so to make it work... I just thought, to hell with it. I should just leave that there. Um, I'll mount a nice cap fan there. I think that might be a knock to her. I don't know. Um, and I put some cable ties in to try to pull the air that way, all the way through. Um, and that was just to tide me over because I decided on the spot. Though it's lovely, this case... Well, quite pretty. This case is just too small for one, what, what I want to do with it. It's a Mars Gaming MC300. Very tiny. Probably most appropriate with an NVMe. Um, there's room round the back. <laughs> the other side of the uh, case to do a little bit of cable management and fit a couple of um, SSDs in there, but it's very, very tight fit. Funnily enough, because it's got two nice fans, three nice fans in it, it's quite good airflow for a case its size with glass on the side. And um, my CPU and GPU temperatures are always less than 60, often less than 50. Because at the moment, as you can see, although one of them went loose, the newly installed one, the, the bodge job, it's got four fans in there going. It's nice and RGB, and as well as it being RGB, another trend that can be seen happening is that's actually Corsair RAM, and that's a Corsair power supply unit. So the mother was an MSI, the... GPU is an MSI. The rest of it is going to slowly develop into being all part of the Corsair IQ environment. That's stage two. Um, I won't show you the back of it because it is a mess behind the motherboard, the other side. It's really, really tight in there because it's a tiny little case. Um, so it's case of almost a case of leaning on the case to make the other side fit in i shall show you the other side of it as i unbox this i'm going to call it my unboxing video but out of this box rather than out of the actual cardboard box to be honest i've never understood why unboxing videos are so interesting 20 different people unboxing the same thing. Well, the only excitement about that would be if they got the wrong thing and it was 10 times better than expected. But it's just a thing in a box.
But unboxing this is going to be part of the nightmare of the stage three video, and it will show you in reverse some of the problems of building a computer into a case this small. That's the end of this part of the video. Okay, I've got that lead out of the graphics card, freed it from there. This is a further stage of how we're going in. This is hopefully the reverse of how I had to put it in, but it very, actually it's easier because the fan is gone from here. It wasn't as easy as that before because the fan was still there. Notice the clearance meant that I was rubbing it up against the fan. Yeah. I had to dive it out like a submarine coming out. A lot easier than I thought. MSI. Um, notice how dirty they get. That's oh, maybe a month old. Yeah, I've been using it a month from brand new. Okay. Remove the bodge job clips there. Probably not going to spin that yet. I shall spin that once I'm in the 220. Uh, if ever I manage to get those two fans out of the front of here, and if ever, um, if I was to spend even more money, I have to hide it from the financial committee, my wife, uh, if I was to spend even more money to buy for the, Q, uh, for the 220, the IQ 220, two more SP120 fans, for the top and another one for the back. That would be a pack of three for another 50 pounds. The 220 cost me 61 pounds. I don't really want to double the price of the thing just for prettiness. I've got three fans here. Hopefully they'll do. So now next step. Got the GPU somewhere, somewhere safe and out comes the power supply now something i've learned over the years working from horrible computers in the late 1900s 1990s non 1900s early 2000s Definitely try for at least a semi-modular, or better still, a fully modular power supply. I shall try my best to make this into a disassembly montage. But because I'm going to do that, I have to try to get every stage in and decide later. I thoroughly recommend this pack, by the way. This is Ying San pack. Cost me very little. It's got loads and loads of things in it, but uh, a nice little magnetic pad to put all the metal screws on so it holds them there. So you can either find them or you end up losing them all together in one bundle. Right. Unplug all the stuff off the back of the power supply if I can, but maybe will it come out it's a separate entity not really best to unplug it first it's tricky so i'll see you later when i've done that this is just a snippet to give an idea of the difference in size when you consider that the nearer case, the Mars Gaming, is for MATX only, and the 220T at the rear is can manage up to a full ATX card, though not an E-ATX card, the 220 is actually doing a masterful job of being possibly even more compact in a way, considering the range of cards, uh, motherboards it it can take even more compact than the Mars Gaming. Maybe I'll, 
maybe I'll edit that bit. All right. Just give you an idea of the difference in size of the two. The one at the front can only take MATX and ITX. The one at the back can take MATX, ITX and full ATX, but it can't take EATX. However, there is a lot of difference. And having carried the front one from the other room into here and then lifted the 220 at the back, the 220 weighs seemingly at least twice as much. The front one seems to be made of tin foil, and the other one at the back is more made of like Pepsi cans. Okay, hopefully we're approaching the final stage. It's been quite a while since I had a game of something, a couple of hours perhaps. So now I'm getting the shakes. The instruction book and a little box of mounting equipment, screws, etc. in the drive cage. I shan't be using those. I shall be using the box of screws. Both mounting brackets for um, three and a half inch drives. They can come out and the drive cage is removable. I should do that now. Screw it aside. Four screws underneath. Later on, if I want to put the um, put a hard disk drive in, I can push this back, probably, if I have room. But I assume I have room because it mentions in various reviews that uh, it can just about take a 180 mm um, power supply unit. And yet the box for that white power supply unit I showed earlier suggested it's about 150 by 150. I can grab that right now, take the drive bay out, carefully, first time I've done this, I haven't unscrewed all the screws, take that one out as well, put it in my shirt pocket, forget about it and then Put it in the washing machine later on and break the washing machine. There. Drive case out. Quickly show you the power supply unit. That's going to go in there. Very simple. When you consider that the um, screws for the mounting of the drive bays are there i've got plenty of room to hide cables in there and so on somebody complains that uh, by having removed this cage there is now too visible a hole there that's in case there's a very large aio cooling unit slid down there with deep fans I haven't got one of those, I use air cooling. I can't really get my head around the idea of having water flowing around inside PC. They've been around for years, but I've been around for even longer. Um, a quick overview of the setup with regard to one or two SSDs. I'm gonna put one there and um, this is the um, control panel, the lighting hub for the three fans at the front. This fan that I'm going to put at the back has got this, is it called Molex connector? That's going to go through there and down to a Molex connector, join to that, and the rest of it is stuffed into there. 
Okay. I've taken the back off to make it easier to carry. Hopefully I won't do anything objectionable to the back of there. I'll check what these are. I shan't be showing you some of the procedures of um, building into this because I really hate the way, even now, a lot of motherboards when connecting um, the ports at the front, you know, the USB ports and the on off switch and things like that, I've got this horrible array of eight tiny little plugs that you have to put on tiny little pins in the correct order. I hate that. Uh, one of the cases I've got, I can't remember which, possibly the black one, the whole thing is already into one plug. Now, the lighting has three or if you use all six, six leads from the fans to there and then to the motherboard or to a connector um, just for RGB and another three or six that have to go to the motherboard um, for electric power. That's awful. Lots and lots of wires everywhere, but that's the price you have to pay. But this motherboard that I'm using has only got one point for um, fan power. So I'm going to have to use a three-way splitter for that. Eventually, if I get six fans of the same kind, because they have to be the same kind, SP120s by Corsair, if you want to control them from the software, if I get all six, I'll have to have some sort of... Um, like a USB block with six or seven um, outlets. Now, this is powered, the lighting's powered by, by that, which goes through an internal USB 2 connection on the motherboard, and by uh, SATA as well. I can't find the SATA at the moment. Maybe that was it, and the other one is the one. One or the other goes to power and one goes to the actual motherboard right stopping for a moment again so here we are after a little bit of disappointment about two hours ago uh, when i switched it all on nicely assembled but without the side panels and it didn't work so i went away and read the manuals and thought about it came back and took off the um, power switch, disconnected the power switch from the front of the case and did the screwdriver trick. So all the components actually work. The fan right in the middle, basically that's the um, CPU cooler fan uh, in the wrong place, but I just put that in to make sure that the CPU didn't overheat. It's been running for about an hour now. Um, I think the fans are very pretty. I'm going to play with the IQ software now. Um, finish off, finish it off tomorrow and show you when it's back to be in daylight. But at the moment, there's the fans at the front doing their trick. The uh, power supply unit is on the shelf next to it, hanging around on its own because I was worried about whether or not I had connected that properly either. So... It is all working. I'm going to switch it on and play Lost Ark and, with the IQ and then tidy it all up later on. I may even reseat the um, and uh, reorientate the um, CPU cooler tower. But it's rather pretty. Got lots and lots of lights. The, the motherboard's got the RGB going on the RAM. Um, there are the fans here. The fan at the back is not spinning and not light because I'm going to connect that using the Molex tomorrow morning. So that's this stage. It is actually apparently working. I'll check it out using the monitor in a moment. And here it is in all its glory. I shall show you another picture of it when it's dark to show you how pretty it is. Um, but the uh, cable management still not perfect, but it'll do because it works. And I've managed to get the front and the back panels on without having to squash anything in. Um, I can use a whole array of different color effects 
with my RGB RAM and the pretty fans at the front. I can even get some mm. RGB underneath because I've got an RGB power supply unit. I'm sort of gone on pretty colours at the moment. You may notice that I've also got an RGB light. There. Very beautiful. Now, as far as airflow is concerned, a lot of the um, testers complain about the airflow is not, not perfect. Well, there's plenty of room in there as far as I'm concerned. And even when I play the most uh, frantic parts of Lost Ark, I still get GPU less than 40, usually less than 35. And the CPU 71 is actually the highest I've seen all day. So I'm getting decent temperature readings and I've got a little light show going on. All very pleasant. And here it is in the dark with everything going. Um, literally everything. Rear fan, RGB fan, front fan. And you can just about see traces of the power supply unit colouring phasing through. Unfortunately, none of it's synchronised, which is something of a shame. And here it is in what I hope is its final configuration with the CPU fan in the right orientation and the RAM RGB tuned to be quite close to the three fixed fans above it and a little collection of Playmobil Pirates because Corsair.